Well, they say April showers bring May flowers, and it's time for me to April shower Polly with some attention. I'm sorry. Uh, so, Polly's been parked for um, quite a few months on this street. I've driven her around a little bit, and uh, I moved her a little bit, but uh, haven't really driven her in a while. Haven't driven her more than a few blocks, and uh, now it's time to get her home and see what's going on with this engine why this engine isn't running the way that it should. Will she start? Look at that. Not bad for a 34 year old vehicle that's been sitting for the last month and a half. definitely down on power. That makes me think that there's something going on with the fuel injection. I I'm not sure yet. Uh, maybe just one of the spark plugs isn't working and I'm getting the fuel smell. First thing I'm gonna do before I even get her home, I'm gonna go to a nice level parking lot after she's been running for a few minutes here. And we're gonna check the transmission fluid because I know that uh, it was looking a little bit low before. So I am absolutely floored right now. Barely moving. Let's see if she'll actually shift. Okay, shifted into second, that's good. But uh, definitely doesn't have power to go up just a very moderate hill here. Okay, let's check her transmission fluid. Nothing. Nothing. The old depot had what I needed. All right, got a few quarts. Engine oil is perfect. Right at the level that it should be. It looks nice and clean. Of course, I did have it changed uh, just before I laid her up. So I wasn't expecting it to be dirty, but it's good. Looks like it isn't seeping out, at least while she's sitting. All right, one quart. And she's just above the low mark on the dipstick. Now I haven't driven that long and the, the oil's not up to full operating temperature yet. So I'm gonna drive around a little bit more and uh, check it again. But I've got a couple of extra quarts and uh, get her nice and, uh, nice and level where she should be. So I don't know if you can hear, but she's definitely chugging a little bit. Pay no attention to the RPMs. That doesn't work anymore, but hear her chugging. surging that's what I've got to sort out and she made it home uh, it's only like a mile and a half <laughs> I hope she would uh, but yeah as you saw that uh, definitely some chugging and uh, not doing so well uh, so we're gonna take a look see if we can find anything obvious and uh, start tracing down what the problem may be Ah, the mighty Renault 2.2 uh, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of check everything out here, see if there are any obvious issues, like vacuum lines, these all look good, that looks good, this one is going over here, so we're going to just kind of, I'll spare you guys going through all that, but uh, that's going to be the process first. This alternator is able to move. Let's see, I mean I don't imagine that's causing the issue but definitely why I'm getting slippage so let's work on getting this alternator tight okay I pulled the tensioner out this is where it attaches through here and then I bought a couple spacers I don't know which one I'm gonna use one of these probably the smaller one and then this bolt some washers and a nut try to keep that in line and uh, get that thing tight. Okay, that is working, but as you can hear, there's still a choke. I don't know what that is. So it is currently in gear. 
brake on and I'm standing in front of it, which is really smart. So it's still running a little rough. And what I noticed is this little guy, look how corroded that is in there. So I'm gonna go get, uh, get some sandpaper, maybe some PB blaster, Vaseline, and uh, so we can clean that up. Maybe look at some of the other connectors too. That looks a lot better. Not as easy to get into there. I've tried to sand it a little bit. I keep spraying it with this uh, electromotive. Well, that wasn't my problem, or if it is, doing what I just did didn't do anything to solve it. It's still chugging along. I just took a little quick trip around the parking lot here and it's still chugging along, it doesn't have as much power. So we're gonna get further into it. Oh, I don't like that. Looks like this exhaust is gonna have to be replaced pretty soon. Looks like you're gonna have a, an exhaust leak right there, right in front of the cat. So let's take a look at our first spark plug here. Overall, it looks pretty good, but I checked, and this is the gap. All right, it's a little rusty, but it'll still work. Uh, it says 022 to 026, so I'm choosing 024. And uh, that is way too big of a gap. So we're gonna regap all these. Uh, just so you guys know, these things are super sharp. <laughs> Opening this up, having to touch the end and really cut my finger pretty badly. All right, cylinder three, just pulled this off and uh, it's wet inside. It doesn't smell like gasoline. Could be water. Don't really know where that would be coming from, but let's pull that plug out and take a look at it. All right, cylinder number three was a pain in the butt. <laughs> but uh, I got it. All four spark plugs have been regapped uh, and everything has been cleaned. Already seems to be running better. Well, she's not sputtering and stuttering anymore, but she still doesn't have power. Um, you know, she's never been fast, but uh, just came down this stretch of Clark Street in Chicago, full throttle, shift, shifting through the gears, and uh, could not get her above about 42 miles an hour. I'm gonna try it again. Absolutely floored. First gear. Still floored. Still floored. Shift into second. Still floored. Yeah, I gotta let off because I've got traffic up ahead. Got up to about 25 miles an hour. Getting a smell I'm not loving either. There's definitely some fluid that is uh, has been dripping, so that's probably getting hot on the exhaust. That's what I'm smelling. All right, 35. I gotta slow down a little bit because we're about to go through a tunnel and I'm gonna pay attention because it's pretty narrow. So I did a little Facebook talking and uh, I was told maybe this fuse, <laughs> which as you can see, isn't exactly perfect, although I think I just did that when I pulled it out. But it goes in this little black holder here, which looks kind of corroded to me. So I'm gonna clean this up. Yeah, I mean, and then also is a little bit broken. So I'm gonna clean that up and make sure that that's good. I do believe out of all of these fuses, none of them are the same as this. So I've got some two amps, but they're way too big. It is about the right length, but it's a different amperage and they're too fat. This is thinner. For now, I'm gonna have to try to fix this fuse. Okay, I was able to get one to fit. It's a four amp, uh, and I don't like that, so I gotta get the right two amp, but it does fit and it makes connection on both ends, so that's good. I'm at a point where um, I just don't know anymore. So here's what I've gone through. Uh, 
checked all of the air box, got full flow all the way through. I did notice that right where it connects to the manifold, um, seemed like maybe it was a little bit loose, but it might have just been because I was messing things around. So everything's nice and tight now. That's all good. Everything's operating normally. Uh, I pulled off all four of the um, fuel injector um, power cables while it was running and I could tell every one I pulled off the idle would go down a little bit so that's what the book says to check to make sure that all of the injectors are working so as far as I'm aware all of the injectors are working uh, I did notice a couple of other corroded wires so this is the wire for uh, the oxygen sensor I cleaned that up and then and there was wire for I believe is for the temperature sensor probably for the, the temperature gauge um, I cleaned that all up it's really hard to clean the inside of it so I haven't gotten that as clean as I like it but it looks pretty good um, I put it back on and didn't didn't make a difference on the temperature gauge I know I have spark in all four cylinders I know I have air I know I have fuel the question is am I getting enough fuel well, it's time to test the fuel pressure. So I've borrowed one of these from AutoZone. Looks brand new. I don't think it's even ever been used before. And it's not like a modern engine where you can just hook things up and test it. Uh, so I'm gonna have to, this is the pressure regulator. This is going from the pressure regulator into the fuel rail, fuel ramp as they call it. So I think I need to pull this off and attach something to here to test the pressure coming out of the regulator. And then in order to test the output, it's that one way back in there. Supposedly you have to pull it off and then you time it for 30 seconds and see how much fuel comes out of it. I don't know. Let's start with this. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if we've got fuel pressure first of all. Well, I decided to do this right as it started to rain. Wait this out a little bit. I think this is just gonna pass quickly, but uh, it is developing. Uh, I don't really have an inside spot to do this. Well, I've kind of got it. This kit comes with an extra piece of line so I can put this T in there. Unfortunately, I need the line to be like eight inches not three and we've got right now no pressure in the system we do have the vacuum off right now so we're going to test what the system will pressurize just by turning the key on and hopefully we don't spray gasoline all over the place well so far zero pressure so why is that? Is it because I have a kink in this line maybe? Is this thing on all the way? That doesn't seem to be doing anything. Let's see. Do we have to have the engine running? Shouldn't have to have the engine running. Okay. Sorry for a second. Oh yeah, now we're spreading fuel all over the place. Okay, let's not do that again. It's coming out here. Got my air lines still on, vacuum lines are still on. Got this going into here. Got this clamped because it doesn't go very far. I don't want it to leak anymore. And this goes into there. And I noticed when I start the car, I noticed when I just put it into on, I get, I see fuel tank level, but I'm not getting any fuel pump pressure. So, I'm gonna start it. All right, what are we getting? Oh. I think you want to stop. 
and we're getting 40. Okay, that's better. Thankfully my fire extinguisher isn't too far away. So, we are getting 40 pounds, which is right where we should be. Got 40 pounds. Let's see what happens when we arrive. down so we've got good pressure when it's running but we're immediately dropping down which tells me we're probably looking at a fuel pump a fuel pump should not allow all that fuel to come out I think we have our fuel pump down in here somewhere yep I think I see it right there I think this guy right here may be our fuel pump. Well, one of the things that uh, people told me to look at is if the catalytic converter is clogged up. So fortunately I was able to undo it. Now we're gonna run pretty much open headers <laughs> around in the parking lot and down the street, see if it makes any difference. I know my hair is normally not that, that, that good, but uh, Wow, it's really getting blown around today. All right, let's see how loud this thing gets. Uh, we're gonna drive it, just up and down the block, see if we get more power. Sounds pretty good, actually. <laughs> Sounds like an aircraft or something. Yeah, we don't need that. Thankfully, the street that I'm on here doesn't really have too many people to live on. It's a movie theater and parking garage, so. And it's also the middle of the day. So, sorry everybody. I'm gonna make a little noise for right now. Oh, of course, we've got a truck in our way. See if we can get it up to 40.
a little bit of a downhill. Oh yeah, so much better. Woo, baby! Never, ever, ever has this car gone this fast. Holy cow. Well, I am very happy. I think we did it, folks. We found our issue. It's just the exhaust. If we can get to 30 miles an hour by the time we get to that stop sign, we're golden. Full throttle. 20, 25, 30, 35. Excellent, excellent, excellent result here, kids. Very, very, very happy. We did it. <laughs> We figured it out. A little hard to see in here, but it's completely disintegrated inside. So that's definitely my problem. We're gonna go figure out a solution.